Hi guys, this is Dimple Mehta and you are listening to our quest. Thank you so much for taking out the time for listening. And thank you for pouring in all the love for previous episodes. I sincerely hope that this can contribute towards your growth. Today, we are going to discuss about how to manage your emotions. For for that we would have to dive deep into understanding what emotional intelligence is what emotional quotient is what are its components and much more this podcast is about exploring what emotional intelligence is how we can acquire it and achieve further growth towards our goals using higher emotional quotient or eq as a tool so let's dive straight in so first of all what is emotional intelligence going by the definition it is your ability to recognize and understand emotions in yourself and others and your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and relationships before we understand the definition and the components of emotional intelligence better let me share with you some statistics so that you understand why emotional intelligence is so important So first of all emotional intelligence does not have any correlation with your intelligence quotient. You may have the highest intelligence quotient or you may not have. But your emotional quotient does not depend on that. Your emotional quotient accounts for about 58% of performance in most jobs. People with higher emotional intelligence make significantly higher salary than people with lower emotional intelligence on average worldwide. And the most interesting one, people with average intelligence quotients outperform people with higher intelligence quotients 70% of the time due to their higher emotional quotient. Isn't that interesting? Now, it is believed that people are born with their intelligence quotient. Learning facts over the years of life does not change their IQ. Meaning, your IQ at the age of 15 would be like your IQ at the age of 35 or more. Unlike your intelligence quotient, however, your emotional quotient can be substantially increased with your efforts. Our brains are wired in such a way that our first reaction to any event would be an emotional one. Only about 36% of the people in the world can accurately identify their own emotions as they happen. So do you see how important em- emotional intelligence is? Now, there are four main skills that make up emotional intelligence and today we are going to discuss those four main skills. What are those skills and how we can acquire them? polish those skills utilize them better for our own growth it's pretty straightforward in the broader category it can be divided into two main components called personal competence and social competence visualize a graph if you may personal competence consists of self awareness and self management social competence consists of social awareness and relationship management so these are the four main skills of emotional intelligence let's understand the first skill self awareness people who are high in self awareness understand what they do well what motivates and satisfies them and which people and situations push their buttons they are aware of their emotions what causes those em- emotions how they react to the triggers this is the foundational emotional intelligence skill now the important thing to pay attention here is not to judge any emotion as good or bad happiness or anger to be aware of what emotion you're going through without labeling it as good or bad is what makes you self aware let's take a baby for example the baby can be happy or sad that emotion can't be forced or removed observing what makes the baby happy or sad is important labeling either emotion to be good or bad may not be the best thing to do in the same way observing your emotion is important 
instead of judging whether it's good or bad or forcing to have or not have a particular emotion next component of emotional quotient is self management by definition self management is your ability to use your awareness of your emotions to stay flexible and direct your behavior positively this involves you to focus on your long term goals and having the ability to put your immediate needs aside for those long term goals so once you're aware what emotions you feel and what triggers those emotions you can train your mind to prioritize how to allow some emotions to take charge and some emotions to be handled later let's take an example imagine you have a colleague or a team member who you like a lot but he or she isn't great at the job you're considering firing him or her and you can use the emotion versus reason list to sort out what the best course of action is now self management comes into play how well you can deal with such sensitive situation of termination to be sensitive yet direct and to the point to be patient with high standard of conduct yet doing the required difficult step a big part of self management is learning to balance your logical and emotional sides one way you can do that is by making an emotion versus reason list You may draw two columns. In the first column, write what your emotions want you to do. In the second column, write down what your logical reasoning wants you to do. This exercise will help you keep both sides balanced, so one doesn't dominate over the other. When you compare them, take note of which side has the stronger points. You might realize maybe your emotions are clouding your judgment, or other times they can be holes in your logic. Either way, you would be making better decision. Coming to the third skill. This is the first skill of social competence the skill of social awareness it is the ability to recognize the emotions in other people and understand what is really happening in a situation so the normal tendency can be to think what you want to say next or to try to anticipate what the other person will say however when you have high social awareness you would have the ability to objectively observe and understand human behavior a perspective much like an anthropologist let's take an example imagine you are in a meeting a room full of people attending and you are the one presenting now you may be the most talented or most knowledgeable person presenting but if you fail to understand that the audience is not interested or not paying attention to your presentation it would be fail no matter how well you presented right on the other hand If you can sense the emotions in the room, connect with your audience and deliver the presentation that they receive, that means you were socially aware to understand their emotions. In this case, even if you presented slightly poorly, you successfully did the job well. Next skill and the most complex skill of emotional intelligence is relationship management. It is using your self-awareness and social awareness of emotions to successfully manage your relations with others. To manage your interactions with others both in the moment and over time. For example, if you recognize your colleague reacts badly to criticism, you can give him or her feedback in different ways instead of making it a negative feedback or complaint. you can share it as a scope of improvement feedback for rectification this will in turn improve your relationship so if you were able to manage your emotions slightly better you see how you can manage your relationship better i'll give you another example where poor management can lead to negative impact on the relationship so imagine you need to thank your colleague or team member for all the hard work they've done so your intention is to thank them and it's a very positive intention but this morning you and your partner your spouse got into a big fight you didn't really feel like smiling so while you're trying to thank your colleague or team member you might rush through your speech without smiling you probably won't come across as sincere so even though you wanted to thank your team member your body language and message didn't match in this case your well managed relationship slipped down a point because of poor emotional management you see how it affects 
Now, the question arises, how to increase your emotional intelligence? The answer to that is simple. You would need to improve each of the four skills of emotional intelligence. How to do that? You should focus on only one component at a time. Pick one skill that you want to work on first. Observe, practice and improve that skill. While you do that, recognize relevant emotional patterns being formed. Create new habits using the improved skill. If you try to simultaneously implement more than that, you probably won't be able to focus enough to recognize the relevant emotional patterns and create new habits. So keep assessing your progress. Keep assessing the changes in your way of behavior, reactions, way of thinking. You could also have a buddy or a mentor to constantly track your progress. Overall, there are three lessons to take away. One, become emotionally intelligent by developing self-awareness, self-management, emotional understanding and connection skills. If you want to improve your emotional intelligence, you need to know there are four basic components. Two, balance your logical and emotional sides to become excellent at managing yourself. Three, a core part of emotional intelligence is the ability to build and maintain strong relationships. One way you can do this is by checking your body language to make sure you aren't sending mixed signals. Not just your voice, but your body and your behavior can be a lot about how you feel. So make sure you're sending the right signals. Great communication means saying the same thing with your body that you're with your mouth. There are various strategies that can be used to improve each of the respective skills. To learn more about those strategies, do leave your comments, do get in touch, please leave a message if you feel like. And if you like this, please rate and review.